Abraham Mickelson. In 1887, my partner and I, Edward Worley, performed an experiment that accidentally changed physics and science forever. In what is now known as the Mickelson-Worley experiment, we discovered that the speed of light is constant no matter what. <clears throat> this may not sound like a big deal, but it went on to change physics and the world and the way we see the universe forever. It's always been hypothesized that light is a light is a wave, so it must travel through some medium, such as water is a wave and that travels through water, and sound waves travel through air and metals. <clears throat> this hypothesized medium is called was was called ether. However, it had never been discovered or proven, only theorized. <clears throat> My partner and I were trying to detect ether by determining the speed of light in different reactions to determine the speed of ether relative to the earth. Proving that the speed of light is relative to the motion of earth through ether would obviously imply the existence of ether. I first started working on this project in 1881 in Hermann von Helmholtz laboratory in Berlin. This is where I came up with the first interferometer, a device that was unique for its time which can accurately measure the interference of two light beams. I was unable to achieve accurate results, though, until meeting up with my partner in 1887 in Cleveland, Ohio. Around this time, there were many great breakthroughs in, this, in the physics community. None were probably more relative to our experiment, though, than James Maxwell's experiments, which led him to determine that electricity and magnetism radiates outwards at the speed of light. From this, he was able to devise Maxwell's equations, which relates, which relates electromagnetism and light. My partner Edward Worley was a genius when it came to making precise measurements, precise measuring instruments. Without him, I don't know if I would have been able to accurately measure interference using the interferometer. After all, only eight years after our experiment, he went on to determine the most precise weight or atomic mass of oxygen to date. My original hypothesis was that we tried to prove was that the speed of light was relative to motion it was traveling into the Earth's orbit since ether was at rest. <clears throat> I, can't, I came up with this hypothesis as well as the initial design for the interferometer. <clears throat> our experiment turned out to be one of the greatest failures of all time, but although our original hypothesis failed, our experiment showed that ether doesn't exist, or failed to show the existence of ether. <clears throat> this meant that the speed of light is constant, not relative. It allowed Albert Einstein to create his theory of relativity, which is paving the way for physics in the modern in the next modern century. Another important exper or another important discovery this experiment led to is that light can travel across a vacuum, such as electromagnetic and gravitational waves. It also led scientists to discover that light is a particle and a wave, and that we can determine its position and its momentum, but never both at the same time. How this experiment worked was light was shown through a half-silver mirror angled at 45 degrees. The beams were then bounced off other mirrors into a single, into a single beam. We expected that from different angles relative to the motion of the Earth through ether, the levels of interference detected, we would, we would detect different levels of interference through the interferometer. However, no matter what angles the experiment was performed, we were never able to get another interference reading besides zero. This showed us that the speed of light is constant.